Alright, hey guys, so um, I just uh, actually did this video and realized that I wasn't selecting the right scene in the software I was using, so my source wasn't set to uh, monitor capture, so I had to restart the entire thing, which is okay. So, uh, what I'm going to be showing you guys is just very basically how to do modeling in place uh, for components on curves and all that kind of stuff. So you can see here I did a cabinet here. Just briefly show you. So it looks like when it's rendered. So it follows the curvature of the wall, which makes the most sense because you know we're building a house. We're gonna base all of our, our furniture off of the walls. We're not gonna be basing all of our walls on the furniture. Um, that's just silly. Um, so we're gonna get her get her going here. Um, and scrolling through all these. Um, this is a product, this is the one I just did the example on. Um, it's very very basic. Um, essentially what it is, is it's just a whole ton of extrusions, just like in, in AutoCAD. Um, it's a very, very, very basic thing to do. So I'm just going to explain it, run it over with you guys. I'll show you a couple examples. Um, and here we go. So um, essentially what I wanted this kind of to do was follow the wall system um, into these funky corners and this curve here that's going on. Um, and leave this little pathway here so that we could get a door through there at some point in time. So what I did was I built it from the base uh, up to the top. So the very bottom of the cabinet um, up to the top of the, the backsplash here. So what I want to do is I can hit this and I can do edit in place. Fairly simple thing. Um, so just to finish that, just so you guys can see that again, click on it so the entire thing's highlighted. I want to use this edit in place. So edit in place, and we're in the modification stage, so what we can do is we can do some cool stuff. We can take this, we can move it. Again, my default, I always use 20 feet. Move it 20 feet away so I can see the cabinetry underneath. Um, what this is, is this is the alabaster top here. That's my material, my countertop. Um, the same with this, this black backsplash here. Um, is also my countertop material. Um, so, yeah, that's that's just the way it is, uh, right here. So, oh, it's it's a very simple thing to do. Um, just drawing the extrusions. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'll just draw like a little thing right here, right in this corner. Um, I'm just gonna create extrusion. So again, I'm gonna go through that, create tab. I'm gonna go to extrusion button. Just click on it, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sl either select lines or draw lines. Um, I prefer to select lines most of the time, but this time I'm just going to draw a rectangle here just to show you guys. And we're just going to do a 4 foot by 4 foot box here. And then let's say I want it like how in this one, what it, what's, what's going on here with the, these base cabinets is it is. It's really just I've I've drawn two sets of boxes essentially, um, two offsets so that we get a seven eighths of an inch thick um, wall for the wood uh, that it is. So it's cherry. And uh, all I'm really gonna do is with this one because this is let's say this is the four foot by four foot area that I want to um, make my countertop. Um, I'm gonna I heavily use the offset command. Um, let's say there's a two inch overhang. And what's going to happen is two inches in, two inches in. Make it all nice and pretty. These are these are just drawing lines for me at the moment. Um, so let's say if this is the this line here is the edge of my countertop. This is going to be the edge, the front face of the cabinet. So then all I want to do from there is say that's two inches apart. If I want to go, if I want my base to be a little bit more narrow than that, um, usually you see that as a little bit of a feature. Um, I can offset it once more, just as my drawing lines, and say, you know, let's say I want it three inches in from the side. So I just go escape, click it, model it, and that's what I'm going to roll with. So just knowing that that's where it is, and knowing that that's my initial boundaries, I'm going to delete those. I'm going to build off of it. So, making this a little bit smaller. Um, but at the end of the day, what I've got here is 3 foot 7 by 3 foot 7. And 
I'm going to extrude it from level 0 up to, if I want that 3 inch trim at the bottom, 3 inches. Okay, and then the material is going to be my cabinets, which is that cherry that you saw on the other on the other cabinet there. Um, so we can just say if that's the, the space I want, I can say okay. Or if I want to add it so that it's a hollow box, I can just do another offset. Say seven eighths of an inch is pretty standard in carpentry for cabinets. You can just go. And zoom in, make it look nice and pretty. So what we have here is a trim, like a little box around the bottom, so that we can work with that. So I can just hit check, check the box. Now what I've got is I've got this box that's been made. Look at that from, let's try this one. Yeah, this works. So you see I've got that base set, all right? Um, back to level one. Now thing to note, I am, after doing my mass, I'm in the Modify tab to restart my next extrusion to make this all one big group, uh, like you saw in the other one, uh, I want to create a new extrusion. So again, create extrusion. Um, I choose to heavily use offset, as I mentioned. So pick these lines here. Um, and then all I want to do is I just want to hit offset. And earlier I said that I wanted that three inch overhang. So three inches, I can go. And that'll finish off my box. I can escape, so I'm not selecting any more lines. Just click and drag, click and drag. And then now if I want to make this one hollow as well, I can just do that, line up these lines here. Pick some more lines, do some modifications. I'm just trying to work quickly here so that you guys can see all that I have to, to show you guys. And again, I'm not going to be completely editing this exactly how it would be built in real life, but as close as I can, I can get it within reasonable time because I mean this is a fairly small cabinet and it's not worth spending all that time on. So last thing I want to do is I have my last extrusion, so this guy, this bottom guy here, had a 3 inch thickness or height above the grade. So I want my start to start at 3 inches. I want my end to be, you know, let's say we want it to be 3 feet tall like the other one here. Um, it's going to be 3 inches subtract 3 feet, which is going to give us 2.75 feet, which is 2 feet 9 inches off of level 2. Correction level one. So I'm just going to hit the check in the box and see how that looks. Again, this is the, the key here is to just make something and then see how it looks. That's what I like to do. So yeah, that's looking pretty sharp. Um, again, you won't see most of this. This will all be covered in, in this stone afterwards, which is, which is pretty all right. So go back to level one. Let's try it again. And let's do a little bit of a create again, another extrusion. Let's make our cabinet door. Um, I'm going to pick lines again because I like to do that. Um, pick lines, pick the first one, pick the second one, easiest way to do it. And then sit here with your offset and say I want it to be 7 slash 8 an inch. So I'm going to offset it again. I'm just going to go which is okay. And another thing, I use these a, a lot like model lines as well. Um, use them to sketch and just kind of put down the general idea and then I edit it from there. So let's say I want the edge of this cabinet to be three inches in as I did in the other in the other cabinet over here. I want it to be three inches from the outside, three inches from the outside, and then three inches away from these guys. So I can just do, again, I can just pick lines, add these guys here, draw it out so it crosses just barely. And then I'll just give it an offset of three inches. Let's zoom in here, click, 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 and a click. So now these original lines, I can just delete those, delete those guys, delete this guy, and delete this guy. Now from here on out, it's all modifications. So I'm just grabbing these little buttons here and moving them around. 
so I get the result that I want. Oops, that's not the one I wanted. And again, auto, or Revit's pretty intuitive. It's pretty good at snapping this stuff. Uh, sometimes you got to tinker with it. And I, I think that's really the purpose of why I started putting all these lines out like this, is because it's way, way, way easier when you've got a line for it to snap to than when you're just kind of guesstimating where it is. Um, I much, I much prefer having that that sense of exactness, knowing that it's snapped to something important as opposed to just the thin nothingness of not a model line. So I've got those set in there. Those are my cabinets. Um, I know the base offset for this main cabinet here was three inches above. Let's say for this next one, I'm going to do, it's going to be an inch higher than the bottom. So I'm going to change this one inch plus three inches is what? Four inches. Congratulations. You win a cookie. It's going to start at four inches and it's going to go up to the top of these. This this main part of the cabinet was, again, we said two foot nine inches. So let's maybe make it a little bit less than that. Make it two foot seven. We can always modify it later and see how it looks. Since these are cabinets, we're going to make them out of wood um, right there. Leave it as my cabinets. Hit the good old check mark. And then we'll go to the 3D view and see she, how she looks. Yeah, that's not looking too shabby. So, just so you can see what we've done, I like to check back and forth, make sure everything's good before I move too far forward, and you'll get a little bit ahead of myself. But that's okay. That works for me. So, back to level one. Uh, I'm gonna put the handles on here because it's easier to, to do when the when the slab, when the, the countertop is not in the way. And I'm just gonna again go back to create extrusion rectangle. I'm going to start from the edges of the corners, and, and again, this is so that I get exact measurements of where everything is. Um, so I've selected this line, and it's right now I'm sitting here at, sorry, I'm going to change this so that's a little bit more friendly numbers, um, six inches. And then, so if I'm six inches here, and let's say I want it to be, again, I'm going to go with my standard number of three inches in, so I just make the math easy here, three inches. And again, that's going to be three inches in from here, so that's going to put that at four inches. So it's still a fairly easy number to work with. Now the width of it, I'm going to adjust it to be 0.5 of an inch. That's a pretty safe number, I feel. It's probably a little bit accurate. Now that these are in place as they are, all I want to do is I want to change this to make sure that it only comes at an inch. So if I'm sitting at right now at nine and a half inches, I'll just edit it so that it goes to uh, one inch. Make it easy on myself. So it's one inch out. And again, we're just going to do the same thing here. Select the line, change it to one inch, bring it out like that. Now we have to change our depths. So we're going to say let's let's keep it consistent with our with our number of three inches so we're going to go three inches less than two foot seven which is going to give us two foot four inches and then we want our total height of our of our handle let's say we want it to be like three inches or something like that you know what let's make it four so we'll just make the math easy and go for two feet so from level one it's going to be two feet above level one is where the extrusion starts and then two foot four inches above level one is where the extrusion will end. All right, so it's all just basically drawing it out in that in that sense, all relative to level one. Now, because they are, I don't want to make these guys out of wood, just to get, maybe give it a little bit of an accent. I made this layer earlier. I made this thing earlier called my handles. Essentially, what it is is it's just black plastic. It's a solid standard Revit material. So I'm just going to hit check. That's going to be good there. Check in the box, and let's look at 3D view and see how she looks. There we go. Look at that. Quite nifty. Little handles there. And again, it doesn't have to be anything intricate because, like, I mean, again, we're not judging ourselves based on our ability to draw cabinets. We're just looking for something there for a representation, um, which this is doing adequately. So, back to level one. I'm going to throw on my countertops and my backsplash, and then we'll be good to go from here. Um, what I want to do is go back to create, extrusion, pick lines, pick, pick, pick. I'm going to use that offset command again. Say I, maybe I want it two inches away from the face of the cabinet. So I'm going to go here and here. 
I believe that's what we said it was earlier. If not, you know, it'll show later on. I'm not really picky. It's just it's all just a number, and it's all gonna look fine and dandy in the end. So we said the top of our cabinet here was gonna be three feet above the top of the actual like wood itself is three feet above the above level one. So I want to make my extrusion start at three feet. And let's say I want it to be one inch thick. I'm going to change that to three feet, one inch. Just to make things easy, change this from my handles, change the material to my countertop, which is a masonry stone alabaster type thing. It's just an image, and it works out nicely for us. So we got that, and we can just hit check in the box. Good to go. 3D view, make sure it's okay. It's not looking too shabby. Um, Oh, I'm a bit off here. That's okay. Um, again, that's no big wolf. All we have to do is come in through here and change it. So, I believe that looks like it's more about three inches. Let's try it. two feet seven. Let's see what that brings us. I'm going to try using this 3D view one. Maybe not. Um, let's try 2.75. That looks about more right. We can zoom in here and we can actually tell because you see that line lines up directly with there. That's where we're at. So we want this to be one inch thick, so we're just going to go 2 feet 10 inches. And that's our countertop. Um, looking pretty groovy. Um, again, back to level one. I'm pretty happy with this, but I'm not gonna. I'm not finished yet. I want to go to create extrusion. Just put a little bit of black back splash on there. Um, again, pick the lines. One inch, same thickness as the the slab there. Just do that. Close off the ends. Oops, a little bit overshot that one. Tidy it up a little bit. Make it look nice and pretty. Um, we set our last one, our surface ends at 2 feet 10. Let's make our backsplash 3 inches high. So we're going to go with 3 foot 1. That's a good end. So apply that. My countertop, good to go. Default 3D view. Look at that. Looking nice and pretty. So that's essentially how I do my, my custom cabinets in uh, Revit. Um, it's a fairly, it's a fairly simple process. I mean, it's all again, it's all just watching you doing boring extrusions all the time, and and it can get quite mundane. But at the end of the day, it's all just line work and uh, making sure that your elevations are correct as per whichever uh, floor you're on. So I uh, hope you liked it. Uh, when I finish it off, I just say finish model, good to go. And actually, you know, the way I've designed it, I've actually built off of this other cabinet here. So plus side I can move all that around if I really wanted to I would have to I would have screwed up there and I would have had to restart completely uh, to rebuild that cabinet but again if I'm not talking through it I can do it in a matter of minutes it doesn't take that long and it's it's not a very um, intense process why did that move so weirdly that's weird is the magic number. 20 feet is the magic number. So, now that, that model's finished, it's all just one, but I would redraw that as as its own item. Um, I haven't explored a way to get it out. But, at the end of the day, when you finish it, that's that's what you get. And, you just go to your 3D views. I'm not going to save this. Do not save. Yeah. Uh, no. I don't care. Uh, this is just an example, but yeah. So that's how that's how you end up looking. You can design it any way you want. Again, the like the limitations are endless. Um, you can draw curves, funny angles, whatever you want to do. Ellipses, the whole shebang. So that's that. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed it, and uh, let me know if there's uh, inaccuracies or uh, stuff that I could definitely be doing better because I'm all about improvement. All right. Thanks a lot, guys.